Breaking news alert out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Fire crews are fighting a massive fire in the downtown area there. That fire started around 4.30 this morning, and it started at a new hotel that is under construction. DOT traffic cameras show flames shooting in the air that can be seen for miles. There are no reports of injuries as of now. We also don't know yet what caused the blaze. Also new this morning, the Polk County, Minnesota Sheriff's Office is investigating the death of a person whose body was found inside a burned out semi. Deputies got the call about a rollover yesterday afternoon around 3.30 just south of Mentor. A semi was on fire in the ditch and it was fully engulfed when deputies got there. After the fire was put out, authorities found a body in the vehicle believed to be that of the driver. Sheriff's officials say this is an active investigation and no other information is being released until family members have been notified. Let's get a check now of our Tuesday morning forecast and starting off the day quiet. Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Yes, it is looking beautiful out there to start off our morning. A big contrast from what's going on in the East Coast here this morning. Late last night, Hurricane ECIS made landfall, and now it has weakened to a tropical storm, but still wreaking, wreaking havoc here in the uh, eastern part of the U.S., right along the east coast. And it's currently centered uh, to the northeast of Raleigh. Uh, and you can see the rain associated with it has been moving north, but it's actually moving at a pretty fast clip. So the, uh, the location of the center is likely already moved since this last update. Uh, but we're looking at winds that are steady at 70 miles per hour with this storm as this rolls off to the northeast at 28 miles per hour. So we're looking at this impacting the mid-Atlantic, heading into New England here too, with some very heavy rains and some intense winds, 70 miles per hour, steady winds. Uh, that's not even gusts. So it's going to be a rough one. Uh, today in that area. And we do have a live view uh, in the East Coast in Virginia, the Portsmouth area of some rainy gray conditions, you know, the, the heavy rain that's been coming down with this. And then on top of that, you can see the camera shaking just a little bit uh, on our view there. So it's going to be a tough day. And this is going to be the picture that a lot of folks are seeing uh, here on the East Coast. That's kind of the big story here for us uh, for today in the weather world. And for those of us in Fargo. We're looking at quiet conditions coming up here for today. So here's a look at that radar. Uh, you can see the storm lifting to the north and east uh, as we uh, again continue to look at the east coast. But we're going to zip back over to Fargo and Grand Forks and the Red River Valley quiet right now, but you can see those showers out by Williston. Those are going to be moving eastward and impacting us later today. Cool out there this morning, 43 in Wadena right now. It's 57 in Fargo and 54 in Grand Forks. And a look at your hourly planner should be beautiful. Lots of sunshine out there this morning. Clouds building in for the afternoon. We'll see highs in the mid to some upper 70s today and those showers for overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Let's check in with Devin now for the Valley Today's Traffic on the Move. Thanks, Lisa. We are turning on to the northbound lanes of I-29 here. Sorry about the sun. We're currently facing east. We're going to go ahead and uh, get onto the interstate here, and then that problem will be gone. Overall, the traffic flow this morning, it's just now kind of starting to pick up on the majority of our roadways. Now, of course, things started off busy on the interstates, but ev basically everywhere else was looking wide open. It's now getting to the point where it's starting to build up a little bit. Really, still nothing was gonna be causing any delays. Things are moving along nicely out here on the interstates. The only thing to watch out for is, of course, uh, the road work seen up ahead here uh, between 32nd Avenue and 17th Avenue. Now, overall, uh, on I-94, it was also getting a little bit busier, but still moving along well. There, It was more consistent on I-94, however. Here on I-29, the northbound lanes are busy, whereas the southbound lanes, as you can see over to the left of the screen, look very wide open. On I-94, it was more consistent. Both directions were getting uh, busier out there, so just go ahead and be prepared for a more... Uh, more uh, uh, more crowded drive out there this morning and you should be fine on your morning drive. We're going to keep checking out the roadways in the next hour on the Fargo CW, but first, what day is today? It is Taco Tuesday, so Ole the day at Taco John's. For your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. An area school board is cutting back on the hours for its school resource officer. Barnesville school board members voted last night to keep the SRO but trim his hours in order to save some money. The district will pay more than $20,000 to have the SRO work no more than 574 hours. Board members say the change had nothing to do with the officer involved.
Fargo Public Schools is asking for your ideas about sending special ed kids back to school. The district sent out information for special needs students and are asking parents to watch a presentation and then fill out a survey. You can find a link to both of those plans on the VNL News app. And as schools are set to begin in the region in just a few weeks, Fargo Public Schools is keeping parent representatives, or rather seeking parent representatives, to serve on their COVID-19 instructional plan committee. The Valley Today's Brian Chirrod joins us live this morning to tell us how parents can sign up. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Jordan and Lisa, and this COVID-19 instructional plan committee will meet every two weeks to talk about the COVID-19 cases that are going on around the area, but also to put the safety of students and staff first. Now, for you to join, you have to be part of the middle, high school, and elementary staff. Give me for a second as I pull this back up. And levels. These parents would need to have flexible schedules that allow them to participate in these weekly meetings. Signing up is pretty simple. You just need to include your first and last name, email address, primary phone number, and what grade of schooling your child is currently in. The first meeting is set to start on August 10th from 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. All other meetings will be every two weeks beginning August 24th from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. If there is an emergency meeting, committee members will need to meet more frequently with short notice. Parents that want to be considered will have to sign up by 5 o'clock today and they will be notified by tomorrow. Now, if you want to sign up, you can go on our VNL News app. Brian Sherrod reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. The Fargo School District Smart Restart Plan is making sure students both in and out of the classroom will be able to eat. The plan outlines how breakfast and lunch will be offered on the same paid, reduced or free lunch status as before the pandemic. If elementary students are able to return to class this fall, K through 2 will eat in the lunchroom, with grades 3 through 5 eating in classrooms. Secondary students will be served in the cafeteria, but will sit socially distanced. For students who enroll in the virtual academy, there will be one location for them to pick up their meals through a pre-order system. If those don't work out, families should talk to school administrators to explore other avenues. Childhood hunger is always going to be a big priority for us. We're going to continue to, to do all we can to, to feed those in need. If schools are in the level three hybrid, students will be given meals at school prior to leaving for the days they are learning at home. We heard from a lot of people on our whistleblower hotline after they saw a picture from West Fargo, a West Fargo concert Saturday night. It showed hundreds of people without masks standing together at the hairball show at the lights in West Fargo. Epic Company says temperatures and COVID-19 screenings were taken at the door and that wearing a mask was required in order to get into the venue. But concert goers were free to make their own decisions on masks and social distancing once they were inside. They say no one was turned away from Saturday's concert and that as of right now, mandating masks for event goers at the lights is not on the table. Fargo Cast Public Health says they have not received any complaints about Saturday's concert. Charges have been filed against another man who police say was involved in the May 30th riot in downtown Fargo. They say Kefo Lahai admitted that he was at the riot throwing rocks at officers and windows of JL Beers in the Hodo restaurant and lounge. They say that he did it out of anger because police were using tear gas and rubber bullets and he thought the use of force was unjustified. Damages from both businesses were around $10,000. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, 41% of women say if they could have any superpower, it would be this. The answer is being a mind reader. Interesting. I don't know if I actually want to know what people are thinking <laughs> about me. Good point. <laughs> the Today's Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley today rolls on. We have more live up to the minute news and weather coming up on the Fargo CW.